Hey X. I am sorry for any formatting errors, or anything of that sort as this is my first time posting here. I feel like I am out of options, and this may be the only place I can get some semblance of an answer. I thought I was doing better, but this weekend I could not stop thinking about this event. I have work tomorrow, and figure that getting it all written out might help me get a few hours of sleep. This all occurred about six years ago, the summer I graduated from high school. Me, and three friends were all going to colleges hours away from each other, so as for final hoorah we all pitched in and rented a cabin in the Appalachians for a week. It was maybe 10 minutes away from the nearest town, but still surrounded by development. The whole thing was probably more tourist trap than anything, but we didn't care. We planned to spend the days hiking and exploring the nearby towns, then spend the nights shooting the schists and playing COD zombies on my buddy's old Xbox 360. We spent the majority of the first day just driving up there, and it was dark by the time we got to the cabin. We set everything up, chose rooms, and played a few rounds of Kino on the TV in the common area. We called it a night a few hours later, and we all planned to get up early the next morning. I want to emphasize that we did not have any drugs of any kind with us. I've tried to tell this story to my parents, and they were convinced that it was nothing more than a bad trip. This was not the case. The next morning, I woke up with my alarm at 7 o'clock. I went downstairs to find I am the only one up, even though we all agreed to get up at this time. I went to my friend's room, and started knocking on his door to try to wake him up, no response. At this point, I am a bit fed up, so open his door and enter. Nothing. The covers of his bed are messed up, like someone had been sleeping in them and his luggage was here, but he was gone. At this point, I thought that these assholes had just left early. I checked the other two rooms, and saw that they were empty as well. Just to be sure they left, I went out to the driveway. The car was still here. I figure that this must just be a part of some joke they decided to pull on me. I walk back in and start yelling for them, telling them to cut the BS so we could start hiking. Nothing. No response but my slight echo. I tear through the house trying to find them, but they are not here. At this point, the only spot they could be is the woods out back. I call one of them, and hear his phone ring from upstairs. I find it laying on the nightstand next to his bed. Repeat the process, and see that all these bastards have left their phones home. I spend about 5 minutes looking for them out there when I notice that the woods are quiet. I am by no means a woodsman, and spent my entire childhood in the suburbs, but even I could feel that the forest should not be this quiet. There were no birds, none of the summer insects, just the quiet breeze through the trees. I say screw it and decide that if they want to spend the first morning hiding in the woods to mess with me, I am just going to wait inside. I play some zombies again, but after about 30 minutes passes I start getting worried. There is no reason for them not to be back by now. I start getting really worried. I write a note telling them that I am looking for them in the woods, and to call me if they find the note before I find them. 30 minutes in these terrifyingly quiet woods, and still nothing. I have no clue what to do, so I go back to the cabin, and call my parents. First my mom does not answer, then my dad. I then call 911. At the time it felt like a bit of an overreaction, but I did not know what else to do. The line rings for about 5 minutes, but is never picked up. The only thing I can think of is just to drive into town to try and find help. I search around, take the keys, and head off in my buddy's SUV. I get about 5 minutes down the road when I see some asshole who has his car stopped in the middle of the lane. I swerve around him, only to come across more of these cars, just stopped. Look inside as I pass them, and they are all empty. By the time I am close to the town, the roads are blocked by these empty, parked cars, all of them still running. I think this was the moment I realized I was alone. I am not going to act like that thought never crossed my mind earlier, but this was the first evidence I had of it. 
I make it into the small town, and it is void of people. There is no one manning the gas station I enter, no one in the diner next door. I break down into tears. How else do you react to this realization? I spent the rest of that day just looking for anything to show that someone was there. Nothing all day. I make my way back to the house, and go to sleep, hoping that all of this is some bad nightmare I will wake up from. I don't. By the next morning, I fully believe that I am the last human on earth. I wish I could say that I had some enlightened response to this realization, but the first thing I did was jack off. I strip but ass naked, walk out onto the back porch, and play the skin flute looking out onto the woods. Following my act of self-expression, I try to figure out a game plan. I figure that the most important thing to figure out is a food situation, as I have already stress ate my way through half of the food we brought with us. I raided the gas station and the supermarket, and came back with a hoard of non-perishable food, bottled water, and junk food. I stopped by a diner, and used to flat top griddle to try to make some of the canned foods a little more edible. It doesn't work. I spend what I think were about three weeks just trying to keep my mind occupied. I can go more into depth about this if any of you are interested. I begin to venture farther away from the R we were staying, and began to explore some of the surrounding towns. I spent some nights sleeping in the car, some nights sleeping in motels off the highway. I spent one night in a diner whose walls were covered in Sasquatch posters. There were no animals or bugs around either, but the trees seemed fine. One morning, I drive into another small town, and step out to take a piss. Here however, there was a sound. For the first time in days, I hear the sound of a car idling. This was unique, as most of the other cars had all ran out of gas days, if not weeks ago. It is parked outside of a brick building near the outskirts of the town. I approach cautiously, and enter the building. Here I see the first human since everyone disappeared. He is at the end of a long hallway, in a room filled with filing cabinets. He is tearing through them, like he is looking for something. I wish I could say that he looked particularly interesting, or was wearing something like a hazmat suit, but honestly he just looked about as normal as you could be. A mid-40s slightly overweight, average height man, wearing a rolled up collared shirt and jeans. I clear my throat to let him know I am here, and he turns around. He has a normal looking face, with salt and pepper hair in a buzz cut. He sees me, and breaks into a smile, and says you are not an on yet, right, in an almost joking matter, like he knew the answer would be no. I stare back with a look of confusion, and his expression changes on a dime. He looks partly shocked, partly furious, partly confused, like I just told him I banged a mom he did not realize he had. He looks into my eyes, and within a second of our gaze meeting, I am bolting upright in bed, at the cabin. I frantically look around, and see all my friends are still there. I try to explain to them what happened, but they all make fun of me for being so scared of a nightmare. It wasn't a dream though. I remember it as vividly as memories, and during it, I tried to wake myself up multiple times. All the places I visited were exactly the same out of the dream. I had never been to that Sasquatch diner before, but I convinced my friends to drive over there, and just like in the dream, it was covered in Sasquatch posters, this time with staff running it. The only exception to this was the brick building where I saw the man. We drove through the town, but the building was gone. This pretty much ruined my life. I know that part of this is just my lazy ass trying to make excuses, but I truly feel this way. I don't think my life is real. By any stretch, it feels just as real as that dream. I've dealt with SI because of this. I don't sleep well anymore. I have no motivation to keep going in life. I dropped out of college halfway through my first semester, and now work a nothing job for nothing pay. My parents have paid for therapists, but none of them helped. They all try to convince me I dreamt it all, but I know that is not true. 
I have given up on therapy. I really hope some of y'all can give me answers. I need them. No, never had this type of incident, although I will say that since 2021 my town feels like a ghost town. I hardly see people out now and the ones I do feel like NPCs funny you say this happened around 2017 because I remember out of nowhere I got hit by feeling of numbness like everything was fake for like a week. With that out of the way I do have a few questions about this dream. Why did you stock up on non-perishables and not say indulge in snacks first? You saw slash heard no animals at all? Any mosquitoes or anything? Was internet and TV slash radio available? The dude asked you if you were not you yet? Sounds like he thought you were an actor playing a role or something with the way he phrased that. Also reminds me of the coma lamp reddit story. I would say you woke up in base reality slash real life, but this explanation might not fit what happened to you best as most folks that wake up in reality do so in a pot or a headset or table or something. Maybe you did, but your case was just different. Sorry for not replying sooner, but I just saw this now. I did indulge in snacks, and I think I said that I stocked up on junk food first. I remember going through a bag of pork rinds while in the store, and just thinking how surreal the whole thing was. The canned food was mainly so I could eat some actual nutrients, was just getting into the gym the gym at the time, so macros were always in the back of my mind. Like I said, there were no animals. Not even any mosquitoes, which was one of the nice parts. I do remember seeing some mushrooms, so that must mean that fungi was there too. Radio and TV were gone by day two, though Wi-Fi worked until the power went out, which was about two weeks in. As for the guy, that was all he said I have turned it over in my ear for years now, but all I could come up with is that he thought I was someone or something else, that would later become me. I really have no clue, and that is what freaks me out the most. After about a week I stopped keeping track, so all of these are more approximations. It very well could have been closer to a month, but like I said, they were all approximations. Every day felt super similar, so they bled together, and I don't just mean I did the same thing. It never rained once, and it always felt like the same temperature. The trees and plants remained green though, which I found odd. If you need to reply to someone, click the post number. Are you able to recall the exact date you arrived at the cabin? If so, you can try repeating what you did. Go back there on the same month and day. Then fall asleep around the same time in the same room to see if it repeats. But this time, come prepared. Bring anything you need for any projects you'd like to do. Think of it like entering a time dilation chamber. Ah, I see how to reply now, thank you. I don't want to repeat what happened though. To this day, I wonder what would have happened if I didn't find the man, and I never came back. It was lonely, much worse than I am now. I have no close friends, but you don't realize the impact of being the only person alive, until you believe you were. I don't think anything I did in the other world occurred in this one either. I started out trying to eat a balanced diet, but by the end I was clearing out the snack section of every gas station I came across because I didn't give a damn anymore. Because of this, I felt a bit pudgier, but that feeling went away after I woke up. Of course, I can't verify this as I did not have any scale. You're welcome. You were given an extremely rare gift. A lot of young guys would have liked to have had an opportunity like that. You were in a time dilation dimension. Finding the man in that building was the trigger for exiting. You could have stayed there for as long as you wanted to. It always felt like the same temperature. That's how it is in the afterlife. I wonder if part of the trigger was me being at such a transitional part of my life. I was going to go out on my own soon, and maybe my anxiety about that served as a catalyst. Me being at such a transitional part of my life. That might have been a factor for why you were chosen. Did it feel like perfect spring weather? 
Not cold enough to be autumn nor hot enough to be summer. I think just slightly warmer than that I would say it was warm enough that I felt uncomfortable in the sun, but it was cool in the shade. I realized after the fact that I never got sunburned, which is odd considering I burn super easily normally. That sounds like afterlife weather. It's perfect every day. What about the nighttime weather? Nighttime weather was perfect. It was cool but not cold, and I looked forward to being able to stargaze at night, enjoying the weather. Did the gravity feel different? I don't believe so. It sounds like you temporarily died in your sleep. And the world you were in was your afterlife room. Did the man you meet look like he could have been how you'd look when you reach your 40s? I don't think so. He looked taller than I am, and the face wasn't quite like mine. 